In the last lecture, we created these roles where we want to seed these roles into the new auth database. And for that, we have to run entity framework core migrations. So let's do that. Let's open tools, new git package manager and open package manager console. And in here, we want to run the two commands where we want to add a migration and then update the database. So as before, we want to add migration. So let's say add hyphen migration and followed by the name of the migration in double quotes. I will say this is creating auth database. And if we run it like this, because this is the command that we know, and if I run it like this, it will fail. And as you can see here, the call didn't go ahead. And it is saying that more than one DB context was found, specify which one to use using the hyphen context parameter. So as before, we now have two DB context in the solution, which is the normal NZWalks DB context and the NZWalks auth DB context. So we have to supply which DB context to run to add this migration against. So we will say add hyphen migration inside double quotes will give the same name. So creating auth database. And after that, we will use the hyphen context parameter and specify inside double quotes, which DB context to run. In this case, we want to run the auth DB context. So we will say NZ walks auth DB context. And using this, we will now have to specify this every time we want to add a migration or update the database because we have to tell which DB context to use to run this migration against. So enter that and now it will run this migration and create all the necessary tables and columns needed to set up identity. So once we have the migration key created, it is now time to update the database. So similarly, update database as we used to do before. And after that, we have to specify the context command. So context parameter in double quotes will be NZ walks auth DB context. Because we want to run this migration against this DB context and this connection string. So press enter on that and this will update the database. So now it's creating the new database and the tables needed for identity to work. So let's come back to the Microsoft SQL Server. In here, we only have the NZ walks DB context, but if I refresh the SQL Server, and expand on databases. We have the NZWalk auth DB here as well. If I expand on that, we have the tables needed for the users and roles required and everything that is needed to set up identity in our application. We also had seeded some roles. So let's see if they are present in the ASP.NET roles table. So if I select on that, we have the two roles that we need later on when we register our users. We have the roles needed and we can provide users with these roles. And when the users are created, they will end up in the ASP.NET users table over here. So if I select on that, it should be an empty list for now. But as and when we register users, they will end up over here as well. Now that we have run the migrations and created the identity tables inside this new database, there's one more piece of setup left for setting up identity. And then we can switch to creating the controllers or action methods for registering and logging for the users. And after login, we will finally jump to the JWT token creation. But all of that in the next few lectures, let's come back in the next lecture and set up identity.